Madam Deputy Speaker, on the day that he took office, the Prime Minister said that he wanted to restore trust to British politics with action, not words. Well, today, his actions speak for themselves with a budget that contains broken promise after broken promise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, reveals, and reveals the simple truth that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have not been straight with the British people. Yeah. Time, time and again, time and again, we Conservatives warned Labour would tax, borrow and spend far beyond what they were telling the country. And time and again, they denied they had such plans. But today, the truth has come out. Proof that they planned to do this all along. Because, Madam Deputy Speaker, today's budget, today's budget sees the fiscal rules fiddled, yes. borrowing, borrowing increased by billions yeah. of pounds, inflation-busting handouts for the trade unions, yeah. Yeah. Britain's poorest pensioners, British, Britain's poorest... Order! Order! Just as we respected the Chancellor and heard her speak, we were here, the Leader of the Opposition. Speaker. Britain's poorest pensioners squeezed, yeah. welfare spending out of control, and a spree of tax rises they promised the working people of this country they would not do. Yeah. National insurance, up. Yeah. Capital gains tax, up. Uh. Inheritance tax, up. Uh. Energy taxes, up. Uh. Business rates, up. Uh. First time buyer stamp duty, up. Uh. Pensions tax, up. Uh. They have fiddled the figures. They don't like it, Mr Speaker. They don't like it, Madam Deputy Speaker. Order! The public will also want to hear what the Leader of the Opposition has to say. And shouting whilst I can see you will mean that you will not be called to speak later on. Simmer. They don't like it, but this is the truth. They have fiddled the figures. They have raised tax to record levels. They have broken their promises. And it is the working people of this country that are going to pay the price. Now, now, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Chancellor and Prime Minister have tried to say that they had no choice. But be in no doubt, their misleading claims about the state of the economy are nothing but a cynical political device. Today's situation, today's situation is a world away from the genuinely bleak in legacy that we Conservatives inherited from the last Labour government. Borrowing. The Shadow the Chancellor forgot to point out, borrowing. One pound in every four that they spent. Debt rising every year and unemployment at 8%. Now, I understand the Chancellor's shameless political motivations. Why it suits her, why it suits her to cook up a false justification for her agenda. But today, the OBR has in fact declined to back up her claims of a fictional £22 billion black hole. It actually appears nowhere in their report, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it is deeply, deeply disappointing that she has sought to politicise the independent ODR that should be above party politics. But as she now knows, as she now knows, her playing politics has done real damage to our economy. She talked. She talked. She talked about being a Bank of England economist. Well, as the Bank of England's former chief economist has said, Labour's approach has generated fear and foreboding and uncertainty amongst consumers, businesses and investors. The rhetoric of this Chancellor and this Prime Minister damaging the British economy for political purposes. Now, you only need, you only need to look at the facts. 
to see that the Chancellor's claims about her economic inheritance are nonsense. Labour inherited an economy with inflation back at its 2% target. Mortgage rates, mortgage rates being cut and unemployment low. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, when we left office, the United Kingdom was the fastest growing advanced economy in the world. And when it comes... And when it comes to the public finances, not once has the Chancellor acknowledged that we took the right decision to spend half a trillion pounds to protect the British people from the impact of Covid and Putin's war. And let me remind you, not only did the party opposite support all those interventions, they wanted us to go even further, Madam Deputy Speaker. And when I, when I made the tough choices to fix the public finances afterwards, the Prime Minister and Chancellor opportunistically opposed me every step of the way. So I will take no lectures from those two about difficult decisions. But because, but because of those decisions that we made, the Chancellor inherited lower borrowing than France, America, Italy and Japan, and the second lowest debt in the entire G7. So any which way you look at it, Labour's claims about their inheritance are purely ludicrous. These are her choices, so stop blaming everyone else and take responsibility for them. Let me turn let me turn to the substance of those choices. During the election the chancellor repeatedly promised that her plans were fully funded. Yeah. Only a few weeks ago the prime minister said the budget would balance the books. But this budget does no such thing and reveals they have not been straight with the British people. Oh, come on. I can see you, even when you're hiding behind another colleague. No. <laughs> Yelling across the chamber is not on. The public and our constituents are watching. I know emotions are high, and I expect some noise, but have the confidence to shout closer, and I will definitely call you out. <laughs> Lead the position. A few weeks ago, the Prime Minister said the budget would balance the books. But this budget does no such thing and reveals that they haven't been straight with the British people. Because today, the Chancellor has launched an enormous borrowing spree, saddling our children and grandchildren with billions upon billions pounds more debt, pushing up interest rates, leaving our economy more exposed to future shocks, and, and leading the OBR today to now forecast higher inflation in every year of the forecast. And her decision to let borrowing rip make a total nonsense of her claims on the state of the public finances. Because if they truly were in such a dire strait, as she has said, what we should have seen today is a significant reduction in borrowing to repair them, not the splurge that she's just unleashed, Madam Deputy Speaker. Instead, what we see today, borrowing higher in every year of the forecast, debt higher in every year of the forecast. Now, now she has tried, she has tried to cover up that splurge by fiddling the fiscal rules. According to the Institute of Fiscal Studies, the new measure will not actually even be a constraint on the amount she can borrow. And it is hard to escape the suspicion, they say, that the government is attracted to this change by the fact that it would allow for significantly more borrowing without any need for tough choices elsewhere. Fiscal fiddling is what they have called it. And the Chancellor herself actually agrees because she specifically told the British people she wouldn't change the debt target. Because, and I quote, she said, I'm not going to fiddle the figures to get better results. But that is exactly what she has done. She has gone back on her word and fiddled the figures so that she can borrow billions more. Broken promise after broken promise and working people will pay the price. 
Now, the reason the Chancellor has increased borrowing and increased taxes is because she has totally failed to grip public spending. First, she has no meaningful plan. First, first she has no meaningful plan to deliver the £20 billion worth of savings available if the public sector returned simply to its pre-pandemic levels of productivity. Instead, one of the first things the Chancellor did was to hand out inflation-busting pay rises to the unions without getting any productivity-enhancing reforms in return. The Chancellor also... The Chancellor also scrapped... The Chancellor also scrapped her predecessor's plan to get the civil service back to its pre-pandemic numbers. She doesn't think to th seem to think that the civil service can be reduced by a single person. <laughs> and the Chancellor has no plan to control welfare spending. Yet if we simply got working age welfare spending on people with a disability or health condition back to pre-COVID levels, that would free up £30 billion worth of savings. So whether it is scrapping our plans to shrink the civil service or their failure to control welfare spending, this is not her inheritance, Madam Deputy Speaker. These are her choices. And the result, higher spending, higher borrowing, higher taxes. It's broken promise after broken promise and working people paying the price. And Madam Deputy Speaker, let me turn next to growth and remind the Prime Minister and Chancellor that they did in fact inherit the fastest growing economy in the G7. And that, that is testament to the last government boosting investment by introducing full expensing, increasing the labour supply by expanding childcare, reforming welfare and cutting tax on work. All decisions, the OBR said, would increase growth. Now the Chancellor has said that growing the economy is the government's number one priority. The Prime Minister even said that higher growth would come very quickly. Well, to be fair, the Prime Minister and Chancellor have had a rapid impact on growth. As their plans for the economy became clear, survey after survey showed business confidence plummeting. And no wonder, the government's own assessment says its French-style labour laws will impose a £5 billion... Well, they will be explaining it to the businesses in their constituency that their labour laws, by their own assessment, will impose a £5 billion direct cost on business, disproportionately hitting smaller businesses. And as business group after business group has pointed out, the tax rises on jobs and enterprise in today's budget will hobble growth. A poll tax on business is what they've called it. But despite, but despite these record-breaking tax rises, despite fiddling the figures, despite letting borrowing soar, today the OBR has forecast growth is going to be lower under this government than it was forecast to be under the Conservatives. That's the change they have brought. But Madam Deputy Speaker, this is what happens when the Labour Party is led by people who have no experience of business and enterprise. Relentlessly. Relentlessly. Relentlessly talking down our economy delivering a tidal wave of anti-business regulations, destroying our flexible labour market and raising taxes to the highest level in our country's history. It's the classic labour agenda. Higher taxes, higher borrowing, no plan for growth and working people paying the price. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, during the election campaign, the Prime Minister specifically said there would be no tax surprises under Labour. The Chancellor went even further, saying she wanted to bring taxes down. Each time they made these promises, we warned they were not telling the truth. And today, the Chancellor and Prime Minister have done what they were always planning to do, but chose to get hidden from the British people. Far from reducing taxes, as a result of today's budget, 
Never in the history of our country will taxes be higher than they are under this Labour government. Now, they specifically promised, they specifically promised that they wouldn't raise tax on working people. The Chancellor said Labour will not put up income tax, national insurance or VAT. Just this month, the Prime Minister gave, and I quote, an absolute commitment to not raising tax on working people. So what does today's budget do? It raises tax on working people by increasing national insurance and breaking Labour's promise. As the, independ in, as the Independent Institute of Fiscal Studies have said, this is a straightforward breach of their manifesto. Yeah. Because as the OBR have made clear, this tax rise is passed through entirely to working people. Even since she started speaking, the IFS have already confirmed that the vast majority of this tax increase will hit working people through lower pay. But you don't need to take it from the IFS or even the OBR. You can take it from the Chancellor herself. She has previously described her tax rise as a jobs tax, which takes money out of people's pockets. And not only that, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Chancellor also said the problem with national insurance is that it is a tax purely on people who go to work yes. and those who employ them. Yes. So far from protecting working people, she is literally raising the only major tax that exclusively hits working people. <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. Businesses on the British High Street, your taxes are going up. Businesses investing in British energy, your taxes are going up. The small business owner looking to reap the rewards of years spent growing a business and creating jobs, your taxes are going up. The young couple saving to buy their first home, your taxes are going up. The family... Um, oh, Mr. Streeting, you promised me this morning. Yeah, come on, Let's try and keep our promises. I'm sure the front bench were explaining to the young couple and their constituency saving to buy their first home that their taxes are going up. To the family wanting to pass on their farm or their business to their children, your taxes are going up. The parents sacrificing to give their kids the best start in life, your taxes are going up. They're taxing your job, they're taxing your business, they're taxing your home, they're taxing your savings. I said it during the election campaign, you name it, they will tax it, and that is exactly what they have done. Broken promise after broken promise, and working people paying the price. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, from the final time, from this dispatch box, let me deliver. Let me deliver some basic truths. Government can foster growth, but it can't magically conjure it up. We need businesses, workers, investors, and entrepreneurs to all back this country and build our economy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether your income comes in a pay packet from investments in dividends or profits. It is a poor politics that is so focused on what people receive that it fails to see that what matters is what people put in. Yeah. The only way to grow the economy and to create wealth is for people to put in more. So when you create a negative environment for business, when you undermine confidence in our country, when you vilify and penalise people, for doing exactly what we need them to do, which is to invest, take risks and work hard. You don't create growth, you hold back growth. Yeah. And more than that, the promise of growth today does not pay the bills. The growth tomorrow does not pay the bills today. This is not the first government to peddle the borrow to grow myth, but time and again we have seen the same ending. Not higher growth, but higher debt higher inflation and higher taxes. But Madam Deputy Speaker, whatever you think about the economic arguments around today's budget, there is a more fundamental point that I want to conclude with. 
The Prime Minister has talked relentlessly about trust. Yet today's budget reveals, above all, that the Labour Party Today's budget reveals, above all, that the Labour Party did not tell the truth. They said they wouldn't fiddle the figures. They have. They said they wouldn't increase borrowing. They have. They said they wouldn't raise taxes on working people. They have. Broken promise after broken promise, and it is the working people of this country that will pay the price. Yeah.